It's kind of a slow news weekend. Trump did get a victory against Mexico with his tariffs. Uh, at least that's what it kind of looks like, but we can't really be sure yet. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit. It looks like Joe Biden decided to come out of hiding, screwed up a couple of times, and uh, went back into hiding. I really think he's done, though Trump seems really fixated on him. And let's go over a couple of really dumb stories. This is Gene, and you're listening to Dumbasses Talking Politics. <laughs> Trump threatened Mexico with a 5% tariff uh, last week, actually a couple weeks ago, unless they, Mexico did something to prevent Central Americans from Honduras and Guatemala crossing, crossing through uh, the Mexican border, southern, Mexico's southern border, crossing the whole 3,000 miles of Mexico and Ill arriving illegally into the United States. Three things were supposedly agreed on. Now, we need to be careful here because apparently maybe these were, maybe there weren't. Um, there are different news outlets that are talking about it. I think that'd be great if all three were done. I think it'd be great if one or two were done, but let's be careful with this now. Three things were, were supposedly agreed upon. The first is that Mexico agreed to send 6,000 National Guard troops to their southern border. Next... Mexico agreed to allow migrants up to apply for asylum in Mexico, not travel 3,000 miles uh, to, the, to apply in the United States. Now, the United States already has this agreement with Canada. Basically, what happens is that an immigrant goes to Canada. They, cannot, they have to apply for asylum in Canada. And they can't go through Canada, get to the United States, and apply for asylum. I believe it's called the First Safe Harbor Doctrine. I'm not, I have to look that up, but it's something something like that. Um, United States, I'm kind of surprised, actually does not have that kind of agreement with Mexico. Finally, the United States has the ability to accept ability accepted by Mexico to send the Central Americans back into Mexico if they're caught. In, on our border, caught crossing our border. Uh, letting in, Instead of the government having to house these people and, and go through the court process, the United States can send them back and the Mexicans can do with them what they want, but the people will not be allowed to have their court cases and stay in the United States, which makes absolute sense. That's pretty much it. Not too much more on that. Um, but that's actually pretty huge, considering we're averaging between 100 and 110,000 illegal immigrants per month. Uh, I, th I think that's great. And if this stuff works out, if there is something in writing, and if Trump does not have to use, actually use tariffs, um, it would be an absolutely huge victory for him. <clears throat> of course, the media can't let that happen. So... The first thing they started doing was yelling about what little was done in the agreement. There were only a few. There were only a few um, details in the deal. No one has actually seen the deal yet, so I don't know what they're complaining about. But those two or three things that we just talked about could be absolutely gigantic, and I don't exactly know why anyone would think this is not a victory. But, uh, yeah, we do, because the media doesn't want a victory for Trump. The media had to find something that made this victory sound more irrelevant. So the media decided, based on iffy sources, that said that Trump had made the deal months ago and was only announcing it now because he wanted the victory of some type at the border now. I guess a booming economy, ISIS being destroyed, and record low unemployment while working within the most obstructive Congress in history isn't enough victories for the first two years. He needed to make something up for another victory. I don't know. Well, here's the problem. Uh, the Washington, I believe it was the Washington Post, had actually said that um, the reason this is not a victory for Trump is because Mexico already made this agreement uh, three months ago. They said they were going to allow 3,000 people, 3,000 soldiers on the border. Well, here's the problem. 
the deal was not good enough, Trump kept negotiating it. And now there are 6,000 uh, people on the U.S. board, 6,000 soldiers on the border. So basically, the Washington Post said that the deal was done months ago when the deal wasn't actually done months ago. Uh, the Washington Post, again, is talking out their butts. Uh, and it could be the New York Times. They talk, they're no better than the Washington Post. Or it could be the Huffington, uh, Huffington Post. They're all the same. If this stuff is true, this is a huge victory. And the left is not going to be able to counter it. Illegals must go through the asylum process in Mexico. Now, they cannot, the Mexico cannot let these people cruise up from, from Honduras and Guatemala, illegally cross the southern Mexican border, run willy-nilly up through Mexico to 3,000 miles, and then just cross illegally into the United States. We need to have some sort of process or control. We do not need these people here. Honduras has lost 1% of his population due to uh, deportation, or not deportations, excuse me, due to immigration. 1% of their population. That is an incredible number. Now, most end up here. Some stay in Mexico. They don't all go here. But that is an incredible number. How about losing a percent of your population? The Mexican government agrees that The Mexican government, if the Mexican government agrees to secure their borders, if the Mexican government agrees to uh, allow them to be the first asylum seekers, if the Mexican government allows the United States to actually send people over, this is a huge victory. This is a huge win. The United States doesn't have to worry about these people coming over and, and having to, to hold them and take care of them. You can send it right back right back into Mexico and let them stay in the streets. And they know that this isn't going to be good for Mexico. Look at, look at the, what the mayor of Tijuana has been saying. He's been miserable since they allowed these people to stay in. So this is a, this is a huge victory and all with those tariffs. I did not want tariffs in Mexico because of the I do not want tariffs in Mex against Mexico because they are like our fourth highest trading partner. And the economy is a little shaky, a little brittle. And I think having uh, tariffs on two major trade partners could really hurt the economy in the long run. So if this whole thing works out, good for him. And I think he can take a run around the track, around the track. Sleepy, creepy Joe Biden is doing his damnedest to lose this election, which everyone kind of knew he would. Last week, he flipped, then he flopped, then he flipped, and finally he flopped. There's nothing that shows more pre presidential aptitude than not taking a position. This whole thing was started when he was questioned about the Hyde Amendment. Uh, that amendment simply states, it was, a, uh, it was made in 1976, simply states that the federal government cannot fund abortions. He was the head of the committee that actually approved the bill, and he, uh, he approved of that bill, he approved of that law from 1976 all the way to June 6, 2019, when he was asked about it by a left-wing media outlet. And he said that the times have changed, and he was now against the Hyde Amendment. Then he was asked by a more moderate supporter, a more moderate news outlet, not a right-wing news outlet or a conservative news outlet, but a, a more moderate news outlet. I don't know what these outlets are. One of them was the Huffington, one of the left-wingers was the Huffington Post. But, and he had said, no, he still fully supports the Hyde Amendment. Then someone, again, far left, asked him if he supports the Hyde Amendment, and he made an absolute positive statement that he doesn't support the Hyde Amendment. Oh my God, come on, dude. This is the type of pandering that he does. This is going to be Joe Biden's biggest pro problem. He's not in touch with the little guy like he 
he tries to prove with his lunch pail Joe moniker. He's been a politician going on 50 years. He's not a regular guy. He's an elitist. He's a politician. And seeing the flip-flopping and the fact that he is hiding from the world right now shows he's a liar and a panderer. He knows he, if he's ever asked a question, he'll screw it up and create one of another infamous flub that are, are flooding the internet and YouTube. This is not going to help his presidential chances, and it's just the beginning. He has already, on his website, been tagged for plagiarism. Now, in the 80s, when he ran for the president, uh, ran for the president, ran for president, he got nailed for a speech which he plagiarized from some European uh, a politician. Now he's already getting nailed plagiarizing here. Oh my God, that's two, that's two flubs. But this is, and this should have been under one of my funny, under one of my funny things, but I didn't, I decided to actually put it in, um, put it in Joe's thing. Um, he released, I, I don't know, he released the tweet. I, I swear, I swear this could not have been from him. This had to have been from somebody. And he really needs to pull this off because it looks, it panders it looks desperate. It really looks bad. And in his tweet, and this is his official Joe Biden um, running uh, Twitter account, happy pound best friends day to my friend at Barack Obama. And the picture, it's it's priceless. You can actually see it at dumbassestalkingpolitics.com. The picture is two friendship places with the little letters Joe and Barack. Oh my God. This is pandering at its worst and kind of looks a little gay and effeminate. I, I, I know I shouldn't say gay, but it's embarrassing. This is a dog whistle to Barack Obama. What this treat actually says, bro, where are you? Pound WTF. I need your support. Pound, please help me. Pound, pretty please. Pound, getting my ass kicked. Pound, please retweet this. That's what it actually says. It's just, oh my lord, I feel, I feel so, ah, uh, I don't know. I would delete that tweet and I would immediately say his three-year-old daughter put it out there. I, I just, well, three-year-old daughter, his daughter's got to be about 60 because he's, you know, get approaching 80. Joe Biden knows where he stands. He's lost seven points in the last week. His opponents, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, they're now catching up. They're within 10 points of him. He stayed out of the limelight because he knows he's a gaff machine. Of course, the first time he stepped out and, and in, into the public, he gaffed already. So he's a disaster. He can't win this without Obama's support. He's got to have Obama's support. I don't think it's going to help too much because I think Obama is now considered too much of a moderate. I really think Obama is not going to be able to help Biden too much. But he needs Biden because he is falling like a rock right now. He's weak and only going it's only going to go downhill from here. I can't wait until I hear some of the debates coming up. Much of the media is saying his best day was his first day. That's not that is most of the media, not mainstream media. Mainstream media is saying the same thing as uh, the conservative media. The Daily Wire said the same thing as CNN when it comes to Biden. That includes, uh, it's looking like they're all right. I think his campaign's done. I, I think his campaign's done. I think he will he will float around for the next six months, maybe a year. He will hang around, but Bernie and all of these people are going to end up just destroying him later on, especially with the debate. He does not look honest. Bernie, as much as a crazy nut job he is, is at least honest. This guy is not honest, and he is going to gaff his. He's not honest. He's not real smart. I don't think he can debate. I don't think he can debate Trump. 
This guy's got to go away. It's just he's just a waste of a twenty of a twenty third spot. One of these days we're going to have to have a podcast just talking about each of the each of the um, Democratic uh, candidates. Believe it or not, I think you'd be shocked if you knew which one I like the most. Or those who really know me probably wouldn't be. Just look at the pictures. Now, here's some really stupid things. And we're going to have to do an entire podcast in California because California has really gotten under control. Uh, California has decided they're going to legalize health care for illegal aliens. This is the state that has a, an extremely high unemployment rate, an extremely high tax rate, a huge ho- and a huge homelessness problem. We have banned straws and plastic bags. Car fuel is $1.50 more than any other state in the union. And it doesn't look like it's it doesn't look like it's gonna go below $3.50 anytime soon, if ever. But hey, let's spend a hundred million dollars a year to give illegal aliens full health insurance. That's awesome. Love it. Now they did put some they did put some restrictions on it. Uh, it only applies to I think uh, kids up till the age of 24, but they wanted to expand it more. But guess why they didn't? Because we've got a like a three trillion dollar debt and they couldn't afford it. Wow. Um, Way to F things up, uh, California, and we've got more coming for California. I just read a couple of articles about this state. Gavin Newsom really is really outdoing himself. He is trying to make himself look dumber than Bill de Blasio in New York. He's really trying. Um, I don't think he can do that. I'm not sure he can do that, but he's given a shot. Here's a dumb story. Here's another dumb story, and of course, from California. And of course, if you live in California, what is the dumbest city in California? From San Francisco. The San Francisco's Museum of Modern Art. A kid named, a 17-year-old kid named T.J. Kayatalan. Kayata, Kayata, Kayatan. Okay, something like that. Decided to lay a pair of glasses on the museum floor and then stare at it ponderingly. Uh, he was. He has done this before. This isn't the first time he's done this. It's actually more of an experiment to him. He wants to see if some of the modern art out there is really l- looked at as art, even though it's stupid. It's not real art. He first decided to do this when he saw a uh, art piece at a modern art um, museum, where it was a purple stuffed animal sitting on a gray blanket. And he said, how is this art? Well, he, he pulled this off and he stared at it. And sure enough, sure enough, people started looking at it. And then there were even guys going on the ground and taking pictures of the pair of glasses sitting on the ground. This pair of glasses look like something, like I'm wearing glasses now to read my script. They were so, they, I buy three pair of glasses for seven ninety nine. They look like a pair of readers. People were staring around it. They were, well, this isn't the first time he's done this. He actually did this at another place. He did it by putting a baseball ca- uh, cap sitting on a trash can and then staring at it ponderously. And sure enough, people walked around and staring at it ponderously. Now this was just a joke. He does not see he does not see this as the dumbing down of art. He's he thinks just because one person sees uh, uh, let me let me let me quote you. He tells Bud Buzzfeed, I, I can agree that modern art can be a joke sometimes, but art is a way to express our own creativity. Some may interpret it as a joke. Some might find great spiritual meaning in it. At the end of the day, I see it as a pleasure for open-minded people and imag- imag- with imagin- and imaginative minds. So he wasn't actually tearing apart uh, art. He was just, hey, you know what? Um, this is dumb. Let me see if I can do this. 
And now he did. He does have when he says, "I see it as a pleasure for open-minded people and imaginative minds." Maybe this is the problem, especially with me, because I am truly not a huge fan of art, and maybe that a modern art. Excuse me. I, I love the classics. Um, maybe this is a problem with me. Maybe when, and I'm not talking about the pornographic, disgusting pieces of art that these people in New York do at the New York Museum of Modern Art with um, crosses and Christ and the Virgin Mary or anything like that. But maybe just because someone has a box there or some wires hooked together or they, they've got some weird art piece, maybe it's for me to open my mind. I can sit there and look at it and say, okay, that's garbage. All right. Why would someone make that? But here's the thing. Um, I didn't think to make that. And maybe some people have other ideas, the simplicity and things, which is what a lot of modern art is. Josie and I went to a... Um, Josie and I went to an art museum when she took art class here in Oceanside. It was a modern art exhibit. And we really took our time. And there were some art pieces that were like, oh my God, what? Why would someone do this stuff? And, but you know something, and there were a few pieces that were really kind of, why is this art? You know, I've got a square, I've got a white square on top of a white triangle. I, 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 some of the stuff is, is pretty bizarre. I didn't appreciate it, but there was a lot of modern art in there. I did. A lot of, modern, a lot of art was fantastic. There, as a matter of fact, there was a, if you go to run, if you go to, um, um, Really sorefeet.com. I actually do have a review of that museum and with pictures. Uh, um, really sorefeet.com is my personal site. This is my political site. I actually don't write that much on it anymore. But anyway, I digress. I have, there were some wonderful art pieces there, including a, I, it must have been about a 10, no, 10, it's more than 10 feet. I think it was like 15 by 6 foot charcoal charcoal drawing that looks so real I had to get up close to see that there were actually uh, charcoal strokes on there it was just absolutely fantastic well anyway that's my commentary maybe maybe I should just be more open to art um, and appreciate a little bit and there's I uh, yes there's gonna be some garbage out there but sometimes there's some good stuff uh, well, back to the story. Um, to the credit, the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art took the joke in stride, thought it was actually really funny, and looked forward to see, uh, I'm just going to call him, well, uh, Kaya, Kayatan, I just hope that's his name, um, back. So, that's it for the day. Um, visit my website at www.dumbassestalkingpolitics.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Runnin' Fool, R-U-N-N-I-N-F-E-W. And you can add, download this podcast from iTunes, uh, Podbean, uh, Podcast Addict. You can see it on um, YouTube. Please leave any comments, especially on my web, website. I'd love to hear them. You folks have a nice night. This is Gene. This is Dumbasses Talking Politics.